Well, the open day from a science perspective offers visitors a, a wide range of opportunities to see the research and, and teaching that happens within our university. So um, it's probably important to point out that the Faculty of Science is one of three faculties within the university that is involved in scientific um, activity. And in fact, the other faculties involved are the Faculty of Medicine, Dentistry and Health Science, and the Faculty of Engineering, Mathematics and Computing. So uh, from the Faculty of Science perspective, what we have on offer today is an exciting range of, of displays, presentations and activities for our visitors to, to take part in. So um, the, I guess the hub of, of what the acti these activities are is right here in the Bayless Building, this building uh, that this studio is located in is a, is, a, is a relatively new and exciting building uh, that the School of Chemistry and Biochemistry uh, operates within. And uh, that has, uh, has a wonderful atrium where we have stalls set up for our visitors to visit and interact with um, our staff and students to learn more about the research and teaching opportunities that are here. So uh, I'd encourage our visitors, in fact, to, to look clo closely at the opportunities presented in the, the Open Day program. Uh, and explore their interests through that. So uh, just to highlight a few of the, of the opportunities that are there, we have, um, as I said, the base set up here in the Bayless building where we can interact with the various people, where the visitors can inter interact with our staff and students. But then at various locations around campus, there are displays running all day and then there are special events, special presentations happening from time to time. For example, uh, the, the chemistry show, which um, many people would have seen in the past, is, is on again. It's always an exciting uh, opportunity and it's just in a lecture theatre nearby, the Bayless building. Uh, then our schools are located, um, some of them within just a couple of hundred metres of the Bayless building. So sports science down to the south on the southern end of campus have activities uh, in relation to uh, high, high performance training and biomechanics and so on. And of course, we have different groups of visitors here today. We have those interested in perhaps coming here as a student in the future, and others who are just interested in science and, and want to see what's happening at the university. So all of these various school activities uh, are available to both, and for those students who might want to come to the university, they, they'll be able to get advice around the courses they might want to choose. I'll just mention one or two other locations. So sports science, I've said, uh, just the river from the Bayless building is the School of Anatomy, Physiology and Human Biology and so as that name suggests there are opportunities there to look at the Anatomical Science Museum, the, uh, some physiology activities and so on and then uh, a bit further north towards the top end of campus near Stirling Highway we have our schools of uh, earth and environment so in, in find displays around biology, um, everything you wanted to know about rocks meteorites, fossils, it's all there to be seen in the, in the School of Earth and Environment. Uh, but also up in, at that end of campus we have our School of Physics and they're closely related to uh, the astronomy research. Many people will be aware of the Square Kilometre Array project, this very exciting mm -hmm. big project uh, that uh, is, is in its early stages and people can take part in activities there in relation to some daytime astronomy and there are many other opportunities around campus. Okay, UWA has introduced what's called New Courses 2012. For those fresh faces just beginning their university studies, what are the key features of a Bachelor of Science as part of New Courses and what advantage, advantages do they have for students? Very good question and it's, we're very keen for our prospective students to understand uh, what the nature of the degree that they would undertake if they graduate not just science, but across the board. So, uh, courses 2012. In 2012, we embarked on a, a, on a major shift in the way we deliver our undergraduate programs. Now, students choose to do one of basically four degrees or philosophy for a very small group of people. Four major degree, main degrees are science, arts, uh, commerce, and design. Mm -hmm. So, if students choose, and in, in fact, uh, uh, more than half of the students do choose to do a Bachelor of Science, just over half, because mm -hmm. the first cohort that came in in 2012 are now at the in their final year. Mm -hmm. And so we've seen the choices that people have made. And choice is a very important word in this context. What our new, uh, new courses provide students with is an opportunity to make, basically, to construct their own degree. 
Now, most students will come in with a, with a broad area of interest, and in the past, if you chose to do science, that's pretty much what you did, science. Now, if you come in and choose to do science, you can actually blend that with um, areas outside of your discipline. Now, that's actually required for all students, regardless of their degree that they choose. They have to take a selection of units at, at one-sixth of the total units they do, and they're referred to as broadening units, mm. outside their science or, or whatever their discipline is. But more than that, a student studying science, let's say they're uh, majoring in physics, they can actually choose to do a second major, uh, either in science or catered for in their major, but in addition, they have a, a broader background, and so we expect our graduates will be uh, have more generic skills, they have a focus on research um, methodology and... So when they have finished their undergraduate degree, what are their options at a postgraduate level here at UWA? Okay, so one of the key changes that came with our new course structure is that those professional degrees that people would be familiar with, such as medicine, dentistry, engineering, professional degrees mm. uh, as, as a postgraduate uh, activity, so these are all available and students uh, can enter these postgraduate degrees with varying degrees of prerequisites and so flexibility is, is still there for those students. Um, but the other opportunity that new courses provide, stream that the other professional degrees, we anticipate that uh, the majority of the students studying an undergraduate degree at UWA will then go on and study postgraduate, uh, possibly professional degrees, but other uh, opportunities in the postgraduate space and it will be offered in 2015 okay so uh, we have uh, a total of almost 20 master's programs uh, offered within the faculty of science some of them in collaboration with other faculties mm. um, the key new ones that we would like to, to be bring to people's attention advanced study in a science discipline such as anatomy or physiology uh, and uh, couple that with uh, advanced study in population health and so we, we bring together the two aspects of, of health science from a, from a population level uh, in terms of administration and policy development and so on but we still couple that with advanced study in the, in the discipline. Mm -hmm. And another uh, uh, very valuable feature we believe of this health science masters is the opportunity for students to do an industry practice. Mm -hmm. so uh, students will be placed for a semester, uh, if they choose to, to take that long, in, into a, uh, an industry partner such as uh, the Cancer Council or the Heart Foundation and so on. Mm. There's been a, a long history of collaboration with these outside industry partners uh, and the consequence of those practicum placements will become a feature of this new Masters. Uh, is that they often uh, get become job ready having worked yeah. in the industry. Mm -hmm. So that's the Master of Health Science. Mm -hmm. um, the other, a couple others that I'll mention, the Master of Biotechnology. What's a little unusual about the Master of Biotechnology, it advances, uh, it provides an opportunity for advanced study uh, in various specialisations within the biotechnology sphere. Um, but in addition, it, uh, it provides some expertise from the business school in commercialisation and marketing. Okay. Clearly, if a, if a graduate out of a, a Cycle 2 master's program mm. is going to be job ready, we would, in the biotechnology sphere, we would envisage them working in a company, mm. in, a, a, in a, a company uh, offering biotechnology. So the commercialisation aspect of this is really quite a unique feature uh, across Australia and, and we, we are hoping for, for, for a lot of success out of that collaboration. Okay. Just briefly before we wrap up, um, the experience is always a really big part of any qualification. Um, what makes UWA, UWA student experience special? Um, as, as the number of students increase uh, in, in undergraduate classes and we found that as we've moved into new courses we have we have very large classes mm. and we're conscious of the fact that we need to, to look after students as individuals. This is absolutely crucial. Thankfully, we have uh, the capacity to use technology to our advantage here and through, through particular aspects of the way a unit, uh, an undergraduate unit is designed, mm. we can ensure that individual students get individual attention. Okay. So you might sit in a class a, a carry a, a t take a unit that has an enrolment of 1,250 students, mm. and yet you still have direct access to to um, to staff, and mm. and we ensure that that 
mentoring role is, is played by these staff. Now, in this space of student experience, the university has recently embarked on, a, on a, an ambitious um, initiative, the so-called Education Futures Program, where we're focusing on ensuring that the student experience that uh, come to UWA uh, takes advantage of all the technology that is available of, the, of, a, of adapting our, our curriculum and the way we teach to suit the opportunities that, that are, are there and, and to suit indeed the way that students in, in 2014 and mm. beyond want to learn. Mm. They, they don't want to necessarily learn the way I learned mm -hmm. um, and even people five years ago or ten years ago learned. Uh, flexibility in, in getting access to the material they need to understand uh, is much greater than it's ever been. Mm. And so we need to take advantage of those, advantage of those opportunities in, in flexible delivery of our classes and make it as, as not necessarily easy, but as beneficial as possible to our students okay. uh, to, to, to enjoy that.